Hey guys, how are you? So people have asked me about developer jobs. They seem to be getting worried that there's no more developer jobs out there. You're crazy. What's going on? I don't know. I just, I don't see that. So, you know, instead of having an opinion, I decided to just look at statistics, you know, right? Statistics are a good thing to look at when you want to form an opinion. So let's look at some stats. So I checked out indeed.com. It's a big job site, one of many out there. And I wanted to see what Indeed is saying about the availability of jobs. So I just did a search today to see, get some counts. So let's go in. All right, so right here we have our C++ jobs. You see with a blue circle around it? C++ jobs, uh, right now, today, there are over 38,000, not C++, C Sharp jobs, 38,000 C Sharp jobs. So it's, uh, it's not bad. All right, let's see. All right, C++ jobs, over 12,000. This is across the US. HTML developer jobs, email developers, that kind of stuff. 17,000 jobs plus Java developers, 40,000 jobs, almost 41,000 jobs. Uh, Python developers, 41,005. JavaScript developers, 43,000. PHP developers, dirty old PHP, for 5,000 jobs. Kotlin developers, 2,000 jobs. There we go, back to C Sharp. So, as we can see, there are plenty of jobs out there, right? What can I tell you? You know, I think if you're having trouble finding jobs, what you have to do is, first of all, look at your skill set, what your skill set is, your skill stack, and evaluate that relative to demand. That's number one. Number two, I think a lot of people who are having trouble finding jobs, I think they've been, a lot of them have done like one or two $10 courses and they've copied projects and then they go out there and assume that they can get a job making uh, six figures. It doesn't work that way. I've talked about it in many, many videos, how to approach this. That's another thing to consider. Another, another thing to consider is maybe you need to just work on your skills in terms of your job getting skills. There is a process, there is a methodology, there is a way to get jobs. You have to present yourself well, good resume, uh, study your market, make sure you know the company that you're applying to, have a good LinkedIn profile, maybe join some communities where you can start networking with developers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all things you got to do. You're not going to magically get a job just because you know how to code. There is a process of going from learning to code, getting those fundamentals down, to getting your first job. The first job is the hardest job to get. Once you have that first job and say a year or so of experience, then that's it. You're pretty much set unless you're, uh, unless you got some real problems. So it's just getting that first job. So don't try to apply to one of the fangs as your first job. Most people won't get that. Most people, your first job as a developer will be a low rent job. You'll still be paid really well, most likely, but it doesn't really matter because that first job is your training. You want to get that, that good year of experience. That's the key. You've got to get your foot in the door writing code. Once you've done that first year, then it's almost red carpet going forward. I'll give you an example. I have somebody I know. Uh, I mentor a little bit. She came here from another country, learned to speak English, did, boot, did the boot camp, then applied to a bunch of jobs, got a job, and within a year and a half, her salary already started off really great, right? Her salary was very, very good to begin with, even though she had zero experience. And then she has now increased her salary by nearly 50% within a year and a half. So she's pretty much set. She keeps developing her skills. She's closing in on two years experience. She's going to be hitting very good numbers financially. And most importantly, she'll be in high demand for years and years to come. It's just that first hurdle where you're going to have to bite the bullet. Everybody has to pay their dues when you're starting out anything new. So don't assume just because you've done two or three courses and copied some projects that that means you are a God's gift to the world of code. You're not. You're not. You're, you're, you're potentially good enough to enter the market. The key is to enter that market. The whole point of this video is to encourage you to not give up, 
to be persistent, to keep working towards your goals. It's really worthwhile. The reason I mentor people in coding and development is because it's worked out so well for me. I really believe in it because since the 1994, coding has been a superpower in my back pocket and then my front pocket and then all my pockets. And it's filled my pockets with a lot of cash over the years. It can for you too. So don't give up. Keep working towards your goals and you make it. Here's a little bonus tip here. I've been training and mentoring people for many years now. And I can tell you that the number one thing that prevents people from succeeding in the, in the coding world is not lack of abilities, not lack of intellect. It's psychological. It is emotional stability. That is the key to all this. That's why I even put out a course on that called Lizard Wizard. And it teaches you not only how your brain works, but it teaches you skills in terms of how to control your mind, to control your emotions, and eventually to, to uh, master your emotions. One thing to control, another thing to master. But anyway, I'm not trying to sell you that course. What I'm trying to say to you is that you're not going to fail at coding because you lack intellectual capacity. 99% of you have it intellectually. Most people fail because they have uh, emotional, psychological inhibitors. So you just got to get past that. My name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I'm the code mentor. I'm the world's oldest mentor, coding mentor anyway. 169 years old. I've been coding since 1994. That makes it about 200 years now. And uh, so what I do is I simply transfer my decades of experience to you guys and girls and everybody else. I, tran I am transferring my information to you guys, my experience, so you don't have to spend 15, 20 years trying to figure all this out. The ultimate goal, of course, is financial independence, financial freedom, and this is achievable for everybody if you follow prudent, proven steps and you do it. I'm not talking about everybody who's going to drive around in a Lamborghini and have a private jet. Those are very exceptional people, very lucky people. I'm talking about the vast majority of financially independent people and how they succeed. How do they succeed? They level up their skills. They work a little bit harder. They start saving and investing like crazy. And uh, they live below their means. And then psh, they're fine for the rest of their lives. Anyway, that's it for today. Bye-bye.